This is the Geochron. It shows a map of the world and where the sun is shining. It also shows the actual date in the lower left, the time in the bar across the top, and the minutes at the little dial at the very top. You can also see where it's which day of the week it is, Thursday or Wednesday, and the changes on the international date line. There also is the sun position just off the west coast of Africa. There's a black dot and it shows the location of the sun over the earth. At this point in the date it looks like it's pretty cold in the Antarctic and it's 24 hours of sunlight up in the North Pole. So how does the geochron work? How does it keep track of where the sun's shining and where it is nighttime? And even more important, how does it know the location of the sun and how does it keep track of the daylight depending on the season? This is the front side of the geochron. You can see it with uh, without the map in the way. The green arrows point to the pivot points that allow the shade to go back and forth across the map to show you where sunlight is shining and where it's not. The yellow is the actual analemma, the place where the sun is on the map. And then the red arrow points to the motor that drives it. The table that the motor's bounded to actually moves left and right. Now we'll show the mechanism actually operating. You'll see that the blue part goes back and forth describing where the sun is not shining. And then there's a stick in the center, the little black dot at the top, actually describes where the sun is located. You'll notice that there's a table going left and right as the stick goes up and down. As a result, the little dot at the top of the stick describes a figure eight, which is the path that the sun traces on the Earth's surface. Notice that when the mechanism stopped, the North Pole has 24 hours of darkness. This is what the back side of the geochron looks like. The yellow arrows point to the wheels so the table can move left and right. The blue arrows point to a disc and a little follower that allows the disc to move the table to the left and the right. The red arrow points to where the motor drive is. And then the green arrows point to the axles that control where the shadow is and how it moves. Again, this is the back side of the geochron. We've added the up and down table to the left and right table. The blue arrows point to the wheels so that the plaque plate can move up and down. The purple arrow points to the actuator. There's a little uh, axle in there that moves back and forth up and down, raises the table. The green arrows again point to the axles that go through to the other side and control the dark areas where the sun's not shining. And the red arrows point to the wheels on the left-right table. The blue arrows point to the wheels on the up-down table. The final actuating arm has been installed. The blue arrows point to the pivot points, go up and down on the up and down table. Again, the purple points to where the actuator wheel is. The red arrows show up and down and left and right. This is what the backside looks like in operation. Pay close attention to the two arms on either side, how they don't match up perfectly. And also notice that the large table with the brass wheels goes left and right. And the small table, which is sort of a V on the bottom, has four wheels on the strap. And it goes up and down. You'll also get a sense for the disc behind that is actually causing the motion. And you'll also see that if you could uh, do an imaginary analemma, it is actually tracing a figure eight back and forth. Here's the front moving once more. You can see that the two concentric axles are controlling two different sets of blue screen, the part that shows dark on the world map. Notice how they're not quite moving the same and they close off gaps and provide a smooth surface. 